Hello everyone, this is David, uh, Fairly Secret Music. Um, today I'm gonna do a huge haul, so I'm gonna just get started. Two things to know. Um, I got this all from one guy that I know. He wanted to just get rid of all of his CDs. Um, partially, uh, the main interest was all the print CDs he had, but uh, once I started looking through stuff, I did some rebuying of things that I had bad copies of. Not bad copies, just things I bought at the dollar bin at half price books or something like that. And um, figured, you know, I for a quarter, I will replace them. So the majority of these things I got for a quarter each, uh, but all the print CDs I paid more for, um, up to 10 or $15 on a few of them, um, but mainly they were like 250 or something like that. So without further ado, let's go through this haul. It is long and I hope not too long. All right. Prince for you. Second Prince album. I already had this, but I figured I might as well buy it again. I don't know. Uh, Prince, uh, what is this? Dirty Mind. Prince Dirty Mind. Prince Controversy. 1999. And I will say one thing about, you know, knowing full well that, like, Prince Purple Rain, there's an version with like bonus tracks and whatever. I had uh, overheard uh, the original drummer for the, the drummer for the revolution talk about how Prince said everybody wanted them to go back and he was always looking forward. So that's why he never wanted to remaster things. I mean, he had moved on from stuff. And so <clears throat> I have no problem getting these versions rather than the remastered stuff. Um, I actually like it better um, than the idea of his whole family doing stuff that he didn't want them to do with his music. Uh, what is this? Around the World in a Day. Parade. The Black Album. I'll let you see the uh, track listing. This was one of the more expensive ones. Um, I don't know albums off the top of my head. Sign of the Times, two disc set. Diamonds and Pearls. Love Sexy. Graffiti Bridge. I bought this even though it does not have a tray case or a tray card. Um, I'm going to have to replace this, but... I figured I might as well get it. Uh, what is this one? Prince and the New Power Generation. Oh, it's the, the symbol thing. I am not, I've never been a big listener of Prince stuff. I like stuff by Prince, but um, never delved really far i had like five or six other things already down there i had the second album and of course like a greatest hits and the third eyed girl and musicology already but um i knew this was a possibility for me to buy all of his print stuff so i just put off buying it and for a while there it was like really expensive way more expensive than uh, it had been. It had been like five ninety nine dollars for like Purple Rain and then suddenly after he died they were like $16 and I was like well, screw that. Uh, come. Batman soundtrack. Musicology which I already have a real version of it but oh well. Uh, Beautiful Experience. I think this was one of the more expensive ones. The Gold Experience, that was another one of the expensive ones. Uh, Chaos and Disorder, Emancipation, and 
New Power Generation Soul, but we all know it's just a Prince album. So these ones were ones that um, I initially wasn't going to grab, but <clears throat> all the stuff that I didn't buy uh, in the original thing, I brought to a bunch of record stores for them and got them, sold almost all of them, and I grabbed a few more because he was like, you can, I'll pay you, um, I'll split the money with you, whatever we get. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. But these were ones that nobody wanted. And I thought, well, I might listen to them. Uh, Jesus Jones, Nora Jones, EMF. Don't they do? You're unbelievable. Uh, the Water Boys, Dream Harder. Judy Bats. I'm not sure if I even listened to this. Bob Schneider. The Bare Naked Ladies, um, he had all the Bare Naked Ladies, but my friend Rob grabbed all of them, but did not need this one. And I decided, okay, I'll just buy it and listen to it. I listened to this whole thing. Some of their lyrics are just absolutely absurd. Um, but there's one song on here called I'll Be That Girl, which gets really dark really quick. Chorus. Uh, the last line is, if I had a gun, there would be no tomorrow. And I'm like, what? What's the, what are the bare naked ladies doing? Oh, I gotta leave that for last. Uh, Jessica Simpson, because it's so absurd that he had this and, uh, who knows? I might listen to it. Probably not. She's kind of easy on the eyes, but my ex-wife used to watch that stupid, uh, show, and I think, I think that was all a fake, you know, her being stupid on there. Oh, man, my beard is... This was the one that I got because my wife hates this band so much. And every coworker I work with um, makes fun of them. And I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand why this band, out of all the bands that sound almost exactly like them, um, got so much shit... And maybe it's because they were successful at it and all those other bands are gone. Nickelback. That's right. Nickelback. I listened to this ironically. I don't even know if I'm using that term right. Ooh, that was a weird squeak. All right, so here are some of the uh, ones that I was willing to and excited to get. Um, Goo Goo Dolls, Boy Named Goo, Dizzy Up the Girl, uh, what is this? Gutter Flower by the Goo Dolls. Um, I have Superstar Car Wash in the other room, so I got that one too. Uh, Soul Coughing. I originally wasn't going to get Soul Coughing, but I liked the singer's solo album a lot, so I thought, okay, I will try him. Dinosaur Jr. What is with this band? Their guitarist shreds, um... And the vocals are odd. It's, it's almost like they don't fit, but this album kind of makes me want to get more. Um, I'm, sh I'm trying to, I tried to keep all the same bands together when I was doing this. Lemonheads, I might have to get more Lemonheads also. Um, the beautiful thing with uh, me being a metalhead in the 90s all the way through, like, to, all my life until um, probably 2013, there was, like, a couple of years where I didn't listen to heavy metal at all. Uh, the thing is, all this stuff that was popular in the 90s, and, oh, this stack, the 90s are alive and well in this stack, in, on these stacks. I should, not one stack, it's many stacks. Um, but... The cool thing is, as I get older, I'm more open-minded to stuff and want to just go all over the place musically. And all the stuff that was like really popular in, um, oh, and my beard is all messed up. I, I, I fiddle with it a lot. Um, stuff that was popular in the 90s and early 2000s, I had no interest in popular stuff. Um, so now going back and listening to it, I'll hear things that I'm, I'm familiar with, 
but for the most part, I haven't heard a lot of this stuff. And I'm finding a lot of joy in listening to this. It's just kind of like, oh, wow, this all this new stuff that I haven't heard. Um, sometimes it brings me back to like, say, 1995. Um, and I, I, I find that kind of fun. And um, it's weird because you don't get that kind of feel from listening to 70s stuff for the first time. But you can remember, I can remember working at Cheapo Records in uh, Minnetonka and just, you know, hearing people talk about things and other coworkers playing other things. Like, I, I've I heard this before. I love this album title. It's a shame about Ray. But, yeah, so... I'm going to probably have to get more Dinosaur Jr. and Lemonheads. Uh, Graham Colton Band. They're kind of like, like, almost like frat boy rock, almost, which my wife makes me turn off every time. Oh my god, Tommy Lee. This is surprisingly awesome. And the first two songs don't sound like anything that you um, would expect from Tommy Lee. Duran Duran Greatest Hits. I got it because Wild Boys isn't on any of the CDs that I already have, the studio albums. I have, like, the first three. Killers, Hot Fuss. Is that Hot Fuss? Yeah. I did not have this Police Live album. I have the box set that has all their stuff, the blue one that has, like, the badge on the cover. Um, that was, like, the size of, a like, a long box CD thing. Uh, but I never bought this. And I like the fact that it's from 79 and from their last tour. No doubt. Um, Gwen Stefani has an interesting voice, especially on the song Tragic Kingdom. Uh, I've always liked that song and I've always thought of getting this, but um, like for a dollar or two dollars, I was just like, man, I don't really care enough. But for a quarter and... Uh, the funny thing is... Um, Well, anyway, uh, No Doubt Again, No Doubt Again, Return of Saturn. I'm trying to go through these as fast as possible. So here's the funny thing. My wife wanted this Ben Harper CD. It's called uh, Diamonds in, on the Inside. And I bought it for her. And then I decided I really like Ben Harper. So I bought the whole rest of the, the collection. I basically stole her CD from her. So I got her another copy so she could keep in her car or wherever she wants to put it. Not a big Billy Corbin, Corrigan vocal fan, but um, thought for a quarter, I will give them a chance because I heard him play one of the songs on Howard Stern, just alone with solo uh, acoustic guitar and vocals and his voice now he uses vibrato so he kind of a lot of vibrato rather than that whine that he used to do and he reminds me of um he reminds me of the singer from tragically hip now i might be interested in listening to that new album by them if he sings like that I wasn't sure if my copy was in good condition, so I figured get another bad motor finger. Dead Can Dance. This is the one that I remember from 1995. My ex-girlfriend, who I lived with, had this, and I remember listening to it quite a bit. This Shira Crow, he had a lot of Australian, like, two-disc versions where it had, like, an extra uh, live stuff or bonus tracks i am not the biggest fan of red hot chili peppers but i thought for a quarter i will give them a shot and see exactly um exactly what's going on i figure also i love the whole band except for the singer um john frusciante is amazing if you guys have not heard uh, he has an album where on the cover it has like water. It's, it's I, really weird. I can't remember what it's called. Um, Imperium. I think it's called Imperium. That album was great. John Frusciante was kind of wasted in Red Hot Chili Peppers, but 
I think Chad Smith's a great drummer. I think Philly's a great bass player. Uh, I just don't like Anthony Kiedis, but I will give them a shot. Porno for Pyros. I have a love-hate relationship with um, Jane's Addiction and uh, Perry, Farrell, Perry Farrell related stuff. I had friends who were really into Jane's Addiction or at the time they weren't really friends anymore and they just kind of annoyed me. And Perry Farrell's voice always kind of, I don't know, I, I like some stuff, but uh, I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot again. Uh, I think this next portion of the stacks were things that my wife wanted, but I was already probably going to grab them anyway. She just kind of reinforced the fact that she wanted them. Uh, Katie Lang. Lucinda Williams. Wilco. I was already going to get this. Every time I see this, I think, oh, is that Wolf Mother? The Gear Daddies. Martin Zeller, formerly from, I believe, the Gear Daddies. Oh no, or was he a Bodians? I can't remember. The Gear Daddies. The Gear Daddies. Blues Traveler. Blues Traveler. I think this is Blues Traveler again. The funny thing is, Blues Traveler. Another Blues Traveler. I'm going to have to make a jam band section in my CDs, I think. All those Blues Traveler CDs, he doesn't even have the one called Four in it. Um, I remember watching a PBS special of Lost Lon Lonely Boys, and they are pretty damn good. Um, this is technically was going to be mine anyway. This is one of the few Beastie Boys albums I don't have already because every time I listen to it, it makes me think of Gilbert Gadfried doing rap. Oh, goodness. Crash Test Dummies. More Crash Test Dummies. Even more Crash Test Dummies. And more Crash Test Dummies. I had already could, probably was going to buy those anyway, and she just... As I said, reinforced, yes, you're going to get those. The Cowboy Junkies. Rusted Root. Um, Rusted Root was actually not one of the ones. Yes, that was the last one in that stack. And then these are ones that I decided. I, at first, wasn't going to get Frank Black and the Pick and Breeders and Belly and Kristen Hirsch and Throwing Muses. But then I listened to one of the Pixies albums and I thought, you know what, I kind of, I want to listen to some like indie rock from the 90s and late 80s. So, and again, at a quarter, geez, when you buy a, a quarter, I bought $200 worth of, 200, 230 or 25 or whatever CDs for $56. So, or whatever it is. Throwing Muses, Red Heaven. I hope I hope this is interesting to people. I, I could see somebody getting bored. That's why I'm going really fast. Uh, Coldplay. I've always been on the fence for Coldplay. Um, I thought his voice was pretty decent. Why did he have two of the exact same one? The only difference is they... This one? No, this one is a... Uh, what do you call it? Club edition? And this one is like the regular direct edition. I don't know why. Uh, another cold play. Uh, this was, yeah, so this, these two stacks kind of got mixed up. Big Head Todd and the Monsters were ones that, um, my wife was like, yeah, we gotta get those. <laughs> my wife is kind of a former hippie chick um she loved grateful dead um especially during college uh and the big woo if anybody knows them uh funny bodine story so my uh this is inappropriate by the way so don't you know skip it for a couple minutes or a minute or so uh if there are kids around um, the Bodines, uh, my brother is, uh, 20 years older than me and he had a, a friend 
whose name will uh, she will rename, remain nameless. She used to come into the record store that I worked at, and so I mean, she was like in her forties, and I was like in my twenties. And one day she comes in and says, "David, you have to listen to the Bodines." And I'm like, "No, no," because I'm a metalhead, you know, and or prog rock type stuff. And uh, she says. I will give you a blowjob if you listen to the Bodines. And I said to her, that means I'll still have to listen to the Bodines. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on that. I should have. I should have listened to the Bodines. Uh they they're okay. Um these were ones that definitely my wife was like, Yes, you're getting those. Um then like twenty years later I buy a Bodine CD and I tell my brother, hey, if you see her, tell her um, I listened to that Bodine's album and it wouldn't have been worth it. But now I'm a little bit more open-minded and stuff. So, uh, Brian Adams. <laughs> oh, this thing is awesome. Lakeside, Fantastic Voyage. I'd never heard of that. Hole. No idea what this is called. What is it called? Uh, the Middle East. Middle East. It's kind of uh, acoustic guitar-y kind of stuff. But it sounded really cool, you know? Material Issue. Valerie Loves Me. That song reminds me totally of 1991. My friend Rob and Stacy, they loved Material Issue. Uh, Gwen McRae. I had never heard of this lady. Uh, this is a live album. This was one of the ones that uh, uh, I didn't know was worth uh, some, like, I don't know, $10, $20 or something like that. But I'm not going to flip it. I don't really flip stuff. Um, and if I did, I would give him half of it. Um, but Good find, that's cool. Beauty and the Beast, one of the few soundtracks that I grabbed from him because I love the, she glances way, I thought I saw, and when we touched, she didn't shudder at my paw. Such a great song. Um, and Beauty and the Beast is my favorite Disney movie out of them all because Belle kicks ass and she's about to fight wolves. But let's face it, those wolves would be like, hey, Belle, we want to protect you. Uh, you too. Um, along with a few other things, for a quarter, I thought, screw it. It looks like a, this is like a 20-minute video so far. I'm just going to make a long one because, oh well, live, this one had four live songs on it. This was like a bonus disc. Uh, Dogstar, if you don't remember Dogstar, Keanu Reeves was the bass player in this band. Seeger Rose, um, they are one of those bands that I've flirted with a little bit and um, uh, never really bought anything, but... Now I have something. This was a local Minneapolis band called, they were actually called the Living Room Club, which is a, kind of an unfortunate name, but I don't mind it that much. Um, if you look under, they go, they, somebody listed it as Tragic Dream, the Living Room Club. Um, they kind of remind me of, oh, what's that band called? Saigon Kick. I'm going to go a little faster. The Church. The Church Best of. Milan Rouge. That was my wife's choice. Same with Sister Hazel. Uh, no Alternative. This has a lot of good bands on it. And this totally reminds me of the 90s. As I said, the 90s are alive and well in this collection. By the way, I... This is a weird background for me. I had to do this upstairs because I just got two new um, or two extra 
shelving units that are exactly like my my ones that I have in most of my videos in the background. So I basically created a room out of uh, shelving units downstairs and um, this stuff is all upstairs ready to go downstairs but I have had like four and a half hours of sleep last night and but I'm still up and weirdly animated and I wanted to do this because it's such a huge haul and I knew if I didn't do it now I wouldn't do it at all uh, Kings of Leon Rufus Wainwright those two were my wife's uh, Trip Shakespeare I would have grabbed but she reinforced it Lulu I think I already had but and here's the breeders and more breeders belly belly i think this is like uh it's called baby silver tooth i think this is like a weird japanese import belly again frank black frank black more frank black frank black Foo Fighters are one of those bands that I've never, ever gotten into. Um, but at this price, yeah, I'm going to give them a shot. And you know what? This one, special to Oz Tour Edition with bonus CD containing six extra tracks. He had quite a few things like that where it had a bonus disc, and I thought that was cool. Tina and the Beauside Movement, they were a local Minneapolis band. They were hot as shit in the 90s. In 92, this thing, we sold like crazy at Cheapo. The Wallflowers. Why is this album so good? I know like half of the songs on here. I've never owned this. I don't listen to the radio. I haven't listened to the radio since like probably like 80s. Um, I've reluctantly listened to it at workplaces and stuff like that, but yeah, I, I might need some more wallflowers too. Some stone roses, a little Brit pop for you. Damien Rice, another Damien Rice album. This one is called Nine. Here is the singer of uh, Soul Coughing. Uh, this is the thing that made me go, yep, I'll, I'll check out those Soul Coughings. Even though the first time I listened to them, I was like, nope. I was really picky at first, and then I started going, you know, whatever. Because uh, I get store credit every year, and... Uh, and he said if I buy him a uh, one of his figures or some toy at the store, basically I could use my store credit to pay for that. So a lot of this is not, it's just not going to be out of pocket money. So that's why I have Kelly Clarkson. She's really cute though, right there. Stroke nine. I don't, this looks like frat rock, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, God. I must have liked it, though. Heather Nova. Oh, she's so cute. She's got a good voice. Um, there's another album by her that I want to check out. Um, but I thought, well, he has this one, so I'll grab this. Bush. Oh, my gosh. Bush. In the 90s, um... I, my friends were obsessed with going to strip clubs and I went with them a few times and I remember Machine Head playing during uh, one performance and so in my head, I'll, I breathe in, breathe out. I was reluctant to get Medusa by Annie Lennox because it's all covers but for a quarter, I have everything else. I have also been thinking about getting these Johnny Cash CDs, the American recordings. So I will see if I like this enough to continue the, the purchase. Uh, 10,000 Maniacs, I'm on the fence. I, 
I'm interested in them. I just wish they, oh, ah, oh, sleep finally is catching up to me. Um, I, I wish kind of they had somebody other than Natalie Merchant, Merchant or Merchant, Merchant, Mar I don't know what her damn name is, uh, on these because she kind of brings an air of uh, pretentiousness, I feel. Jane's Addiction, second album. Or maybe this is a third one. Maybe they had an EP or a live album, and then they had Jane, uh, Nothing Shocking, and then this one. But I figured I'll, I'll listen to this, see if I like to move on. Greasy Meal. I remember this from the 90s. When did this come out? Uh, 96. And they are pretty funky, and I thought that was cool. Violent Femmes. How many times have you seen this album and not listened to it? And then you listen to it and you're like, oh, they did that song? Yeah, I didn't, uh, you know, they, I don't know. Uh, Sugar, G Angel. I have a friend who's really picky when it comes to vocals, but he likes Sugar. And I was like, why do you like Sugar? I mean... Bob Mould has vocal range of a Daisy Air Rifle, and you're really picky when it comes to vocals. And he said, because <coughs> of the guitar on this album. So, <coughs> I have Sting Soul Cages, but I believe I have a really hacked up version of it. Or no, I, I replaced that. But you never know. Who you're going to meet who doesn't have the Soul Cages album. And this thing is... It should be a greatest hits, basically. It's so good. Edwin McCain. I was happy that this is the one with the song I'll Be. Because recently I saw a video where he said... People ask me, are you sick of playing that? And he says... Why would I be sick of something that basically paid for my house? Why would I be sick of something that basically is keeping me uh, doing what I love and stuff like that? So I think that's pretty cool. Counting Crows, Hard Candy. This had one bonus track on it that I did not have. So I grabbed that. Matthew Sweet. Uh, Melissa, what is her name? Off Dermar or whatever. Uh, this is the bass player who used to be in um, Cole. And I don't know if she was in Smashing Pumpkins, but uh, I think she was. But she was definitely in Hole. And this is actually pretty good. I played this in the store the other day and somebody was like, what, what was that album that just played? Because I liked it. Uh, Star Sailor. Enough is Enough. So... I have a love-hate relationship with Enough is Enough. I want to love them more than I do until I listen to this. I've listened to this like two or three times, three or four times actually. And it is pretty damn good. I may have to get more Enough is Enough stuff too. The Verve Pipe. I think a friend of mine burned me this and uh, uh he said he really loved them, and I was unimpressed, but I thought, okay, I'll try it for a quarter. This has the song uh, by Lisa Loeb, um, and this totally brings me back to, what year was this? Oh my god, this is, this is absolutely 1993 for me. Uh, I remember where I was who I was dating, you know, it's just weird. Every time I hear that song, especially, or especially watch this movie, it just reminds me of those times. I don't want to go back to those times, really, but, um, you know, you just wish you did things different and didn't, you know, hurt people's feelings and whatever. I was a dumb boy. Um, Oasis. I hate these two brothers, but I thought... You know, let's give some Britpop a chance. Oh my gosh, I have to reach. So many. Uh, you too. Chris Mars. 
I thought, shit, do I need a Bob Marley in my collection? Figured, okay, I'll I'll do it. And Derek, the guy that sold me all these, he was like, you don't like Bob Marley, that's bullshit. Semisonic, closing time. Um, I don't think I have one of the songs on here, so um, I did grab the Cure Best Of. I have her first album, J Little Pit. I'm not a big fan of Alanis Morissette, but every once in a while I want to listen to angsty um, 90s Alanis Morissette. Tenacious D. It doesn't have any of those HBO songs, but I figured, okay, I've had a burned copy for 20 years. Uh, OK Computer. I have their newest album by uh, Radiohead, and um, I like that quite a bit. Uh, I find this band to be super pretentious, and uh, they basically stole a melody from the Hollies or somebody and got sued over it, and then they tried to sue Lana Del Rey for using the exact same melody, and I'm like, screw you guys, and she actually offered to give them 40% of the sales, and they refused. I hope they get screwed over more. Uh, Radiohead, hey, guess what, Radiohead? I just paid a dollar for four of your CDs. I hate the song Creep, and I don't think I'll ever listen to this um, more than once or twice. Um, but I figured the the record stores that I brought all the rest of the CDs, for, I swear to God, they, they probably paid less than a quarter for the stuff that they bought. Uh, Hootie and the Blowfish. Darius Rucker has a good voice, uh, but I don't want to see him sing country. Uh, Jamiroquai. One thing with Jamiroquai is you guys don't know how to make cool enough album covers to actually distinguish one album from another. That every album, every album looks exactly the same. Thank God for Discogs. Kate Bush. Oh my God, Kate Bush has been haunting me lately, especially since those remasters have come out. And every time I listen to Kate Bush, I'm thinking, is it, why haven't I bought Kate Bush? And the reason is she sings. And uh, the bass player on this is the, fir the bass player on the first Fish album, and he's an amazing fretless bass player. He doesn't do quite shiny enough stuff. And I wasn't going to get this at first, but I thought, you know what? Fine, I will finally get a Kate Bush album, and I'll listen to it and see if I want to go further. Maybe it's just something that has to click with me or whatever. Because most of the time when I listen to Kate Bush, I like the things that sound more like Tori Amos. And then I just think, why don't I just listen to Tori Amos? Or as my coworkers at a place called Shinders in Minneapolis, or, well, in Minnesota, uh, one coworker used to call her Tor My Anus. Uh, Beck... Beck, I like guys who play all the instruments on an album, and uh, he does, and I'm not sure I like his voice, but Pete Yorn, I will get back to you on Pete Yorn. Uh, I really liked what I listened to on this one, so I thought, screw it, I won't even bother listening to the other ones. Johnny Lang. This is when you go by Kid Johnny Lang. I know he hates that. Uh, he he has an album called uh, the first. Oh God, what's it called? I'm not even sure. The first song on it is called Bump in the Road, and that album sounds like he listened to a lot of Stevie Wonder. Like kind of bluesy, kind of funky, kind of soulful. Really good. If you haven't heard that album, get it. Um, it has a picture of him on the cover. Should be easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> Cure, Wish. I have a bunch of other Cure stuff, so I figured, yes. I have a really, like, a totally hacked up copy of this. That This looks like he didn't even, he, like, he bought it yesterday. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to replace this. This, I thought I had, but I couldn't find it when I was buying this stuff. And when I just moved my R&B stuff... It was in with the R&B stuff and not with the hip-hop and rappy stuff. Um, 
Beastie Boys. I did not have this one. This one I have, but you can never have too many copies of Check Your Head because Check Your Head is a fantastic album. And that is coming from a guy who for years hated rap or was absolutely, uh, what do you call it? Just, oh, rap, that, that's just a bunch of BS and whatever. Oh, did we move here? The Pixies, told you there were Pixies in there. Okay, now we're gonna go a little faster unless I have to tell you about stuff. Travis the band, uh, or Travis the Invisible Band. This is actually pretty good, very acoustic -y and I'd never heard of them before. Uh, Bob Mould, he is doing a signing. Uh, it's like a, a special listening part or whatever where you have to pay to get in at the Electric Fetus in Minneapolis. And I don't do that kind of stuff because I, I don't meet my the people that I'm interested in really all that much because they always disappoint me. Uh, Screaming Trees. This guy's got a weird voice. I remember having this one. Um, I didn't remember much about it, but Buffalo Tom. I was on the fence at first with these guys, and then I was like, mm, you know what, I kind of like that indies, 90s, rock stuff, you know, like, J-Lo. 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 Look at her. The funny thing is, I already had one J-Lo, the one where she's in that red outfit, and that actually is really awesome. I like that album. I got these because, um... I, I don't know. I remember when the Spice Girls were huge and never listening to anything by them, just hearing a little bit of it, and I thought, okay. This was kind of cool. Um, what is it? One from the Vault, a two-disc uh, Grateful Dead thing that I did not have. Reservoir Dogs, I was working at a video store when this came out and everybody was obsessed with that movie. Helmet Betty, this of course is the limited edition collector's item in special packaging plus five live tracks. Men at Work Live, the Dixie Chicks. My wife has this, I think, but I think she put it somewhere where I couldn't, I forgot to scan it. So I bought it for her again, just in case. This is my favorite uh, Nine Inch Nails album of them all, I believe. I'm not a big Nine Inch Nails fan, but I always thought if I could find Pretty Hate Machine for cheap, and well, you can't get much cheaper than a quarter. Nirvana, Nirvana, Nirvana. I'm not a big Nirvana fan. Um, I'm hoping that this changes my mind and makes me understand why people love them so much, but I doubt it will. Ah! Oh, God. I just smacked my elbow. Uh, Continuum by John Mayer. I already had this. Um, my wife wanted one of his other albums, and I think I found this for like a dollar or something like that and got this for her because uh, I've been interested in listening to the trio stuff. I did get a two-disc live album that has him solo and then like eight tracks with the trio and then one whole f CD with the band um, because Pino Palladino plays bass with him and Steve Jordan is on drums and that is the hottest rhythm section ever. Uh, Pino Palladino has played with everyone. More John Mayer. More John Mayer. I'm wondering what point uh, Metal Mickey said, what the sh... You know, whatever expletive you want to throw in there. Uh, what was the first thing you were like, oh my god, I can't believe he's got that crap. It was probably Nickelback. Dave Matthews. So I was on the fence because um, this is how much Dave Matthews was in there. And this album I decided to listen to while I went and got food one day. While I was listening through all of these CDs to see what I wanted. 
and there was about twice as much as you will have seen. And uh, the last stop came on, and that song blew me away. Uh, very weirdly Middle Eastern kind of scales and stuff. Just, just really weird, and I something I'd never heard from him because I had always heard, you know, crash into me, and I thought that's kind of how he rolled. And this with, uh, uh, sorry, my video kind of went wacky there for a second. Uh, him with another acoustic guitarist, Dave Matthews, Dave Matthews, more Dave Matthews, uh, more Dave Matthews, and more Dave Matthews, and more Dave Matthews, and a little bit more Dave Matthews, and one more Dave Matthews, and uh, I believe this is Dave Matthews, and uh, this one is surely Dave Matthews, so... <laughs> I told you I need a, a jam band section. Uh, this is the weird section. Um, I like Ani DeFranco. I did not even have this. I don't know why I didn't have it. I think I just accidentally thought it was a greatest hits. It is a live album. Uh, this was a single of Ani. And here was a Live Europe bootleg. I'm not really one to grab bootlegs most of the time, but um, I thought, you know what? I'll give them a listen. One of them I wouldn't even play in the CD player that I was, so I don't even know if it was working or if it will, will work. Uh, this is an official one. I think there's like 20 of those or something crazy like that. This one is the era where I loved her playing the most around the not a pretty girl era this is the album that didn't work so i'm hoping it does because it is from minneapolis in uh october 3rd 1998 didn't realize this was re-recordings of stuff and these albums, because I got them, a lot of them from Half Price Books in their dollar bins, they were really hacked or, um, you know, they were, weren't so scratched that they wouldn't play. But I thought, well, I might as well buy these and replace the uh, kind of bad digipacks and stuff. So we got that one out of range. I didn't have this single, so that's cool. The best Ani DeFranco album ever, Not a Pretty Girl. Little Plastic Castles. Up, 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 up. And if there's somebody out there that uh, is interested, oh, I keep on getting low internet connection. So, sorry, up into the teeth. I'll have to watch this around this era and see around this era, around this time in the video to see what happened there. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to sending somebody a bunch of these, you know, I'd sell them probably for a quarter piece. And I mean, the, the ones that I'm going to replace, um, and you just have to pay shipping, but I don't know. I might just get Kind of weird. But these all look in fantastic uh, condition. You know? And to get good quality, uh, non-hacked up versions. Like, especially this. My version is kind of awful. I know the, the, the case on my copy of that is basically, I'd like... I paid for the case to be redone. So, that was my haul. I paid $150 for all of that. And it's not even basically out of pocket. It's, um, yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be cool. But, also today I went shopping again uh, and got... 
to the last two temperance movement cds that i did not have uh tomorrow you'll be able to see what the sweet sweet uh new setup downstairs is and thanks for watching hopefully this wasn't too long it was only oh geez it was like uh 48 minutes i i gotta go